following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Blowing out of the backfield, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts. Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Shannon, Welcome to Wild Wednesday from the SWBC Mortgage day. Living Room in Frisco. It is Wednesday, right? Do I have my days right? Am I good? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. you're doing good. You're okay. all right. Hump day, right, what baby. What are you doing? Are those convulsions? Hump day, or? baby. <laughs> Hump day. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, Hump my God. Day, the baby. We, we are starting off in the gutter. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> all right, fellas. How are y'all? How you doing, Kurt? Nate? You guys good? Good. Hey, hey good. great, man. Great. How you fellas doing, man? I, I'm doing great. I am doing wonderful. I am hungry. You out of swag? Need... You out of swag, uh, Nate? You ain't got no more fresh swag? Digs into Hold your arm up. I heard, when I heard Shannon tweet on the presidential debates, I decided to downsize. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. I will not be tweeting anything about anything political. Ever. Ever. No. That's not no. something I do. So... <laughs> yeah, and we won't talk about the debate last night. We we nothing about politics on this show. Nothing. Never. The last again. time Shadow, never. The last again. time he thought Shadow said something, <laughs> boy, they crucified him. Yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and it was it wasn't even an opinion. It wasn't even political. No, it was just it was just facts. Story. Yeah, it was just a what had happened. Oh my goodness! Never again. Never again. If you guys ever want to be taken <laughs> off the air, I'm pretty sure I got a way for us to do it, or at least me get taken <laughs> off the air. So, all right, fellas, let's get into it. Cowboys offense, Browns defense. Kurt, you gave me a plethora of stats, and I'm going to be quite honest. It's a little overwhelming, especially that first I'm sorry. point. I'm going to let you. Yeah. Talk, you start the show off. Tell me what the hell did you send me with that first bullet point? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, it's a breakdown of, of runs versus pass. And, uh, you know, even on first downs, they're passing 64. They pass 64 times, run it 45 times. Second down, 37 pass, 15 run. And so, really, right now, we talked a little bit about it yesterday. 67% of the time they're passing. Is that a product of just being behind, or is you know is this are we not do we need to see more balance if they're going to be successful? No, nah, no, nah, you 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 can win that way. Uh, a lot of teams are winning that way. Uh, this is a new NFL, but what what you have to do at the end of all of this passing, all the percentages, check your red zone and short yardage. Are your third down situations, third down, and if yeah. and if and if that is at sixty seven percent. Boy, you killing folks. But if it's around 48 or below, ain't a good thing. Right. When did when did this <laughs> when did this shift? It, the NFL used to be you had to be like Kurt said, you had to be balanced. You had to be around 50-50 or 40, you know, 45 10 years ago it most. started shifting slowly. About mm-hmm. 10 years ago it started shifting slowly. And then when the, when the nerds it, start giving you analytics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, when this, and now, brother, in these last two or three years, see, and when you got a quarterback that's sitting in um, KC and uh, in Green Bay and, and 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 the Saints, look at all the teams that are winning. That's winning. Their quarterbacks are throwing the daylight out of this thing. Look at the Steelers; they're throwing the daylights out of this thing, man. And then you look at the Super Bowl; the Forty ers lost because they could not throw well at the end. So. Uh, even even Atlanta tried to throw their way, you know, into a Super Bowl, but it didn't happen for them. But it happened for the the team opposing them, is which is Jesse's team, you know, King King Belichick. But that's that's his daddy. But anyway, hey, don't hate the play, hate the rings. <laughs> hey, I don't hate the rings, baby. I don't hate the rings. Believe you know what me, what I don't hate the rings, baby. But more to what you were saying, uh, brother. This is the new NFL. You either get with it and be efficient, and third downs are big, man. Jess, I mean, whoa, they're big, Jess. Right or wrong, babe? No, you're absolutely right. And 
I've said this before on this show. If you want to know where the trends are going to be headed in the National Football League, go watch go watch big time high level high school football. Because those big time athletes will become big time college athletes and in return will become big time NFL athletes. And what we what have we seen in the last couple of years in high school? Spread it out. You know, no more fullbacks, yeah. throwing the ball over the park. Well, those same quarterbacks are being recruited by these same colleges. So they get into these college systems, your Mike Leach type systems, your air raids or your spreads. And now everybody's throwing things from the shotgun. Well, those quarterbacks who are throwing for all these yards are now being drafted in the National Football League. So it's either you're going to continue to be stubborn and run things your dinosaur way or you're going to adjust to the athletes that you have. And the athletes that you have are guys who are not used to being on the center, who are used to being in the shotgun, who are used to throwing the ball 30, 40, 50 times a game. So, you know, that that trend started a couple years ago. And again, if you want to know where it's going to go again, watch high level high school football because those guys will matriculate up the system and into the National Football League as well as those coaches who will go to college and then they'll get some systems in college and then they'll go to the pros and all these things will be will begin to change uh, the way we look at football. Are we you getting know, into an era w- where, you know, defense used to always win championships? That's always been a saying across most all sports. Defense wins championships. Are you getting into an era now where, you know, and I'm not talking about just for one game. Like if you play – stellar defense in the Super Bowl and you win it all, then I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about teams that are built around defense. Are we getting into an era now where that's not that's not going to be status quo? Because you look at typically defensive teams that have won defense, you know, championships with defense. Baltimore, they're scoring points now. Uh, Seattle, they're scoring points now. Pittsburgh, they're scoring points now. Are we starting a new era where defense, obviously it's important, but it's not what you're building your system and your strategy around. If you watched that game the other night against Kansas City and and uh, the Ravens, you saw how this, this quarterback and his coach picked him apart. And in turn, it kept their defense fresh and hype. And KC defense looked like the Ravens. Chris Jones was showing out. So it's all about momentum. It's all about how you structure things. And you see the better coaches on defenses now, they are catering so hard to down and distance and percentages. Now, that you want to talk about analytics. We don't hear that a lot on defense. But if you want to hear some coaches, now, Coach, Coach Johnson started this a long time ago. He was big on analytics and de- on defense, the percentages of what formations you give on what down and distance. That's big. You go talk to any of the coaches, Chris and, and – uh, and, and, and Kurt, and you'll see. They'll tell you, man. They Ken Norton is great. Was great at that with, with, when we played with the Cowboys. And I'm quite sure you experienced that a lot, Jesse, with Bill Belichick. Yeah, and, and more so now, guys just you know they they understand that they're going to give up yards. Yes. That's just the nature of the business. Their 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 thing is is that you know all right, cool. If we give up all these yards, you know, can we make a play on a third down or? If we give up all these yards, can we hold them to a field goal? And and that's the way that it's coming down. Everybody's getting yards now. I mean, if you look at the numbers over the over the last couple of years, you've just seen the numbers continue to do this. When you're talking about, you know, a team's uh, overall offense and a team's overall defense, the numbers just keep rising. Th- those days of the 2000 Baltimore Ravens, where you can't even hit like that anymore, right? You can't even nah. you can't even you can't even clean a glass clock anymore without getting fined twenty five thousand dollars. So it's 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 the, the the tide is changing. Do you think that going back to the third down percentage stuff that the problems are right now? The Cowboys are tied for seventeenth in third down percentage. They're like forty seven percent or something. That's our offense. Uh, that's our that's our offense. We're okay. tied for seventeenth. Do you that's think that's bad. A, yeah? Do you think it's a product of like of their third downs it looks like roughly 25 have been six yards or more distance where only like 15 16 have been one to five yards difference is the problem more about what they're doing on first and second down or is it it, to not you know coaching now you coaching now player you coaching you know (laughs) hey hey, i'm serious you coaching bro because if you on first down averaging four yards then second down is a play down. 
If you average in four or more yards on first down, then you can deal with second down. You can hurt teams because they don't know how you're coming at them. But if you mm-hmm. three, or if you four or less, and teams start getting a beat on what you're doing, you know, then you, everything is third and six and third and six, third and eight, third and nine. Teams can play you. And if they have better players at the, at the corner position, like Jesse always saying, can you get in there and reroute this dude for a split second? That third and six allows you to do that. That third and two don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it shocked me that, like, second downs, they're, they're passing over 70% of the time on second. I mean, I could see it on third downs, but second downs, that kind of surprised me a little bit. But I guess that shows that maybe they're just not getting it done on first down. Yeah. You know, the thing is now you, you, when you used to have six possessions on average, you know, Per, per per half. I mean, you got guys holding on to the ball. Now teams, they don't care. They'll come out and the, and the head coach will say, throw it three times. <laughs> throw it. <laughs> they, yeah. You know, throw it. They, you know, whereas the, most coaches back when I played, they would look at it, hey, hey, man, you just wasted a whole series with number passes. Now, sir, we're going to run this and we're going to get four or five or six plays. You know, whether they saving the defense or not. Now you get caught. Like Andy Reid, you saw him during the game. He went back there and sat with his quarterback. And he, and I, he tried to hide it, but he's like, man, we finna throw this ball. We finna <laughs> throw this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, it's like he saw something, right? He saw something. It, was, it didn't matter whether it was third and six, third and eight. He, he didn't care if third and two. He didn't care. At the beginning of that game, it, running didn't cross his mind. And, but he, but once, like Jesse said, he's a creator. He's a master at what he does. And he got the is, quarterback to handle it. Is some of that maybe being off balance and, and throwing more have to do with the offensive line? Is, are they struggling because they're so mismatched, you know, banged up or whatever, that is run blocking a tougher chore? I'm going to tell you no. something. I've seen, I've seen te- – go ahead on, Jess. I'm sorry. Go ahead no, on. No, I, I was, I was going to say just when you start talking about the percentages – you know, you just have to be able to look at a situation sometimes and say, you know what, that's not working for us right now. This is not working for us right now. And, you know, when you go and you draft a guy 17th overall in the first round, you ain't drafting the block. You ain't drafting to go out there and, and constantly picking up, you know, picking up blocks. When, <laughs> when, you, when, you have, when you have weapons like that, you know, and, and Zeke is an absolute a weapon as well. But I think more so now is the percentages of your passing on first down is greater if you gaining positive yards than it is you running on first down. So go back to the analytics. Coaches are just looking more and more at that and saying, well, you know, I can pass for a four-yard gain or a five-yard gain that gives me a greater percentage of breaking that for a longer gain and putting me in second and short. Um, so I just think more guys are just doing that. You know, we, this was a team for the last 10 years. Well, you, you can go almost set your clock to it first down was going to be a running down, you know, and, and teams got a beat on that. And what you try to do is this is this chess game that you're playing. You try to throw a team off. You try to give them a different look. You try to give them something different than what they're norm. And now you got you have them playing on their heels and you're playing you're playing the attack mode and you're playing to your strengths. And that way now you can come out and do a multiple uh, a, a multitude of different things and they don't have a beat on what you're going to do, whether it be pass on first down, run on first down, screen on first, whatever it may be, you throw them off by not giving them that consistent rhythm of, you know, well, it's first down, it's probably going to be a rundown. Nah, we're going up top. And you throw them off that way. So, but, what, but what you can't do, what, what you can't do is give, as an offensive coordinator, a uh, head coach, is you can't give your team an automatic ne- negative play. What I mean by that is a triple reverse. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I, you agree or disagree, Jess? When your You're offensive right. line is struggling, you don't you don't have slow developing plays. Right. Where you're trying to misdirect somebody, and all of a sudden your player get hit for ten yards. Now you say, okay, it's 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 second and twenty. What are you gonna do then? And they just gonna go sit back ten yards, let everybody run off the ball, and tackle them on third down. Now you off the field. So you have to always be thinking, okay, my offensive line is toe up, but here's the quick slants, the quick outs, uh, a quick double move, put some air under the ball, you know, run a quick trap. It's, it's many things you can do as an offensive coordinator and a, and, a, and, a, and a head coach, 
you know, to, to get to help your offensive line when they're struggling. Are they doing that? Are you seeing it? At, at the end of the game, they played well, except for that last one where Dak got uh, got almost sacked and he spun out of it and threw threw it deep. They, they they was doing a pretty good job. I mean, Coach Philbin is not doing a bad job. Uh, and you know, I said for years, if most teams can have one All Pro, you know, they would be all right. And and I'm telling you. They don't look bad. I, if this would have happened a year ago or two years ago, I'd have been like, "Wow!" I'd probably been just sitting here staring at the wall, you know. But they don't. They don't look bad. They 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 are doing things. They're staying competitive. Uh, this team we getting ready to play, man. They play good team defense. They play solid team defense, led by, uh, whew, led by Miles Garrett. You know, you don't want to catch him on a bad day when he had a dose of his lot in him. Oh Lord. That is a great Nate. That is a great segue into the second segment. What's wrong with this? Did you say his allotment? Dose of laudanum. Laudanum. That's what the oh. back in the Western days he was taking laudanum. Yeah. To Let's keep them calm our- and keep them mellow. Let's take our first break. When we come that was back, cocaine we will, before it was cocaine. We will, t- <laughs> we will talk about Miles Garrett and that Cleveland defense in the second segment, and then we'll talk a little Cowboys offense in the final segment. When we come back on Hanging with the Boys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the Otterbox boys. Otterbox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. Otterbox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their Elevation Tumblers? And Otterbox Elevation Tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce growler. Check out all the colors and sizes of their Elevation Tumblers at otterbox.com. It's football season, and when you're tailgating with your friends and your family, you want the best meat on your grill. Pettigene Meats makes the best hot dogs, the Pettigene Griller, or the All Beef Franks will score. To complete that tailgate meal, Pettigene Meats has hickory smoked sausage, hot links, Polish sausage, and the best hickory smoked bacon and ham around. Available at your local retailer. And a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. It's Pettigene Meats. Taste the difference. We can't wait to see the Cowboys back on the field, and we can't wait to pack AT&T Stadium to watch them play. When that time comes, SeatGeek is the place to get all of your tickets. Plus, tickets to the hundreds of games, concerts, rodeos, and other live events we'll all be able to enjoy again soon. Every SeatGeek purchase is protected by a buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. SeatGeek. Let's go. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Get your tickets now to see the Cowboys take on the Cleveland Browns when they return to AT&T Stadium on Sunday. That's this Sunday, October 4th. The limited number of tickets are on sale now. Get yours at DallasCowboys.com slash tickets. Welcome back to the SWBC Mortgage Living Room here in Frisco, Texas. And during the break, I just realized, fellas, look, I need to shave my chest. Look, I got one hair. Oh, my God. Look at that. No. I, need, <laughs> I got a hair. I need to shave my, my chest. That's that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> It's all that hair on your face. I would think you'd be having to shave it every day. No, I don't have a very hairy chest. I got a little bit right down here in the in the in the uh, valley right here, a little bit. But I'm that's, glad that's I can't about... see that, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad I can't see that, man. I'm glad it oh. takes me that link, bro. I just realized I've been falling down on the job with the dad jokes. I got to bring those back. 
No, don't maybe, do that. Don't yeah. do that, please. <laughs> maybe this episode. Please. Maybe later Chris, in this episode. Make his phone go out when we do that, bro. Make, <laughs> make his computer go out. <laughs> All right, you brought up Miles Garrett, Nate. Tell you us some names. Jokes what my dad did to me. Just leave him on the porch. <laughs> don't. Just don't, don't, oh, don't, don't, don't know what. <laughs> that that is good. That will be an <laughs> ongoing. That will be an ongoing bit on this show. Even even if Jesse is no longer on the show at some point. This yeah. <laughs> you know what? If Jesse yeah. says it don't bother him, but ever since he brought it up, every no. somebody brings it up every day. <laughs> every day, somebody brings like I get a text, I get t- tweets. Somebody's like, "Oh man, I just caught yesterday the other day's yeah. show, man. That story really resonated with me." I'm like, "It was a joke. <laughs> it was one supposed guy, to be funny." One guy tweeted, "This was the funniest thing he's he heard in a long time." He yeah, that. He did, yeah. <laughs> wow, that dude needs to get out more often. Oh, that, hey, let me let me say though. this right here, man. Y'all y'all know who is a part of the Cleveland Browns defense? Miles Garrett, yeah, home hometown guy. Uh uh-uh. uh uh uh. Who? who? Adrian, Adrian Claiborne. Claiborne. Do y'all remember that? Uh, name? Oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh. Isn't that the He's guy the that we had? Rush specialist, isn't man. That the, isn't that the guy that we had some issues with uh, with the banged up offensive line and? Atlanta a couple Atlanta. Of years ago. Yes. Is that the same yeah. guy? Yeah, who ran a, who ran a third round pick out of the league. I wonder if mm. he's gonna get his uh I wonder if he's gonna get his bonus against <laughs> us this year again. <laughs> He went, nah, to the, he, he went to the Pro Bowl. <laughs> he went to the Pro year. Bowl on us. Yeah. Literally, because, after after that game, he only had two more sacks for the entire season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he got his uh hundred some thousand dollar bonus. Dang. It made the Pro Bowl unreal. Unreal. Mm. Tell tell me nice. some other guys on this defense, Nate. This defensive line. Tell me about how they play. How they're playing right now. Miles Garrett. Uh, he got three sacks overall, but he got two against Washington last week, and he had a forced fumble. He's playing well. They both their safeties. Uh, B.J. I mean, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Carl Joseph and Andrew. Sandejo. S-E-N. No. Sandejo. Thank you, Sandejo. Jesse. Sandejo. They, they, they play back and forth. They play Wait a back minute. And forth Wait a minute. Sandejo. Yes, that's, the, what? that's the same Sandejo yes. that was here in Dallas. Yes. When yeah. you were here. Weren't yeah. you here when he was here? Yes. 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 He was at my training, at training uh, camp in San Antonio. He had that ugly yep. mustache back then, too. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. dude they, has they, been in the they, league they, a they, long time. Yeah. Go ahead. Not only has he been in the league, not only has he been in the league a long time, He's been starting in the league for a very long time. And so we cut him in training safe, camp. Talking about, talking about safety help, this is a guy, I'm not saying he's an all-world beater. I'm just saying he's been a professional starting safety in this league since I've been, you know, I've been there almost seven years ago, and he's been a starting safety in this league for a very, very long time. He, he, was, with, he was with them in, in Minnesota as well. Pretty he, nice to he, have right now. He had, uh, he had 15, he's got 15 solo tackles. And four assists by their stats. Uh, him and Carl Joe. Carl Joe's got an interception. Took it back about 49 yards last week. Uh, fumbled it away, but the Cleveland got it back. That's how bad it Washington luck is. Uh, uh, they got Sheldon Richards. Uh, had a sack last week in a pass defense. So, but they. But what what against you is they play good team defense. They're solid up front versus the run. Nothing special, but they play good team defense. But they got an up and coming guy, Miles Garrett. Uh, Carl up Joseph plays well. He's here, isn't he? Uh, up and coming, up and coming, up, up uh, and coming. He's what, already here. What I isn't mean, he? no. What I mean by up and coming, I think. And Jesse, tell me if you see the same thing or you don't. I think when I say up and coming, I'm trying to say, and, and it's hard to get there. Number 99 for the Rams. I don't have to call his name, right? That's yeah. the potential I think this kid has. That to turn a game around. That's what I think this kid has. Jess, uh, I wanted your opinion on that, man, for, no, he's for a, Miles he's Garrett. A, 99 is in the – you put him in the world. Yeah, he's own, the elite. Right? Yeah, he's you, the you, elite you, you by himself. In, you put him in a conversation of his own. He's he's flying first class. But but Miles Garrett is a game wrecker. You yeah. don't put a body on Miles Garrett, he's going to make he's gonna make your life a living hell for four quarters. And – you can tell that he has three sacks, but he has two forced fumbles. When he gets to the quarterback, 
he's looking to get the ball. Like, that's his thing. Like, he's looking to get his hands and arms around the quarterback's hand and arms. So when he turns that corner, yeah, he'll take the sack, but he's, he's trying to make a play. And, he got one and, against the Bengals. Yeah. I'm and he you, got bro. one against the Bengals, and he has one against one, Washington. A, yeah. So, so <laughs> he, he, he is turning that corner with bad intentions. <laughs> he wants to create turnovers. He wants to get the ball at the quarterback's hand. He wants to be a he has a potential to be a game wrecker. He wants to be a game wrecker. And what he's gotten, and this is what we've been trying to find here in Dallas, Cleveland has found a reclamation project in Sheldon Richardson. This was a guy who was drafted really high in uh, from the Jets. In fact, you know, he 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 yeah. they thought he was going to be the next great thing. And I think for him, that city life was just a little bit too much. Maybe too close to home, too many folks hanging around him. He got shipped off to Cleveland, and what he's giving Cleveland is he's giving them. Now, hear me when I say this: he's giving them Aaron Donald like. Not he ain't on that level, but he's giving them that middle pressure. And 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 when you're talking about offensive lineman play, right? Your tackles, your right tackle, your left tackle. In the pocket, they they are responsible for maintaining the width of the pocket. I want those guys to have to run the hump, right? Make them take the long way to the quarterback. Well, your inside guys, you're tackling your two guards, they maintain the depth of the pocket, meaning that the quarterback has room to step up in the pocket and deliver the ball down the field. What Sheldon Richardson is doing for this, this Browns defense is he's – He's creating that pressure in the middle. So now that pocket is collapsing. Quarterback doesn't have time to step up in it and deliver the ball down the field, which allows those rushing ends who are taking that hump to get around the backside and create some havoc. So that's what they, they, they've been given a little bit of, of, of energy in that middle with Sheldon Richardson, and he's able to create because he's strong, he's fast, he's athletic, and he's been able to collapse that pocket from the inside and that's how guys like Miles Garrett runs the hump and gets the sack because that quarterback is, is dropping back further and further because he has nowhere to step up. And so that's what they're getting up front with guys like Sheldon Richardson and Miles Garrett and, 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 and uh, I can't ask the other guy's last name, Larry Unjagbo. They're getting Ungajbo. that pressure from the, and Gaja, getting the pressure from the outside and they're getting that pressure up the middle. And think sounds, about it. That's exactly what's one, been giving had, us trouble. Yeah, yeah. He has one sack versus Washington, one against the Bengals, but he's had constant pressure. And what they're doing is they're earning the right to rush the passer because they're not giving up big yardage plays in the run. So, uh, and then they, they, Washington gave up five turnovers, three interceptions, and two fumbles. So they had a, a great day defensively. You know, hitting these guys, intimidating them, and the quarterback didn't help the situation at all. So, they they they, they played tough, man. And they, like I say, Sandejo and Joseph on that back end doing what they got to do. I think Ward went out of the game, but he was. But Terrence Mitchell came in and played all right. Uh, Another Dallas guy. You know, Olivier, Joe Jackson's on that squad. Another Dallas Vernon, guy. Mm-hmm. Olivier Vernon is the only guy that you can't has not done anything. But B.J. Goodson. BJ, yeah, BJ Goodson is a tackling machine. Uh, Sandeo is a tackling machine. Carl Joseph is a tackling machine. These guys don't miss uh, many tackles, you know. Now, the 28 Kevin Johnson, he had a chance to make a, a hell of a play on the reverse. And he and I thought it was a matter, though, the way he whiffed that dude, that bull that was coming at him. And so, uh, but other than that, man, and guess who they got on their practice squad? Joe Jackson. Y'all ever heard of him? Oh, he played. He played some last Cowboy. week. Yeah. So, so how did, when you got these many guy, good guys up front, then how? I mean, you, it's hard to double team guys, isn't it? How are you going to stop all of them? The thing about it is, it, it, you, you you scheme where you can, but it's all about competition. You still you still have to play. You still you are being paid handsome dollars to go out there and be the best person you can be. That's why film study is so so critical when you don't have the athletic skills uh, and fundamentals uh, to, to, to stop a player. That's why you work on your technique. 
you work on uh, game type situations, you watch a bunch of film and you battle. You fight with everything you got. So if they pay them handsome dollars, do you get ugly dollars? Nate? Or no? Who mm-hmm. me? Oh me, my, I ain't care how my dollars look ugly, handsome, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was say, I'll take it out of the count. Yeah. But I'm just saying, oh. what, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you something, fellas. The, the, the thing is, is you want a bunch of dudes on your team that's going to fight. And every time, you know, I played a guy better than me, uh, which was most of the time, more athletic than me, which was most of the time, what I tried to do was get him concentrating on me. You know, not nothing nasty. I didn't, I didn't get into knees or legs unless you tried to hurt one of my boys. Then I, I got nasty. But other than that, I just want to be as physical and finish as many times as I can, get you on your back, push you over a pile, do anything I can to get you focused on me and not on that running back or that quarterback. So, uh, and, and be physical, finish every play. I mean, even when uh, they sacking your quarterback, you might want to just push him on into him quicker, get it over with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> sure, Troy appreciated that. <laughs> oh yeah. No, uh, hey, once we got good, I, I felt bad for Troy's first two seasons because I, I, man, that dude there, man, I, wow. But after them first two seasons, we didn't have that, brother. We didn't have that. We didn't have too much of that. Yeah, them first two uh, seasons. Ooh. Let's take our last break. When we come back, we'll talk little Cowboys offense. When we come back, I'll hang it with the boys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the Otterbox boys. Otterbox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. Otterbox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their elevation tumblers? And Otterbox elevation tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce growler. Check out all the colors and sizes of their elevation tumblers at otterbox.com. It's football season, and when you're tailgating with your friends and your family, you want the best meat on your grill. Pettigene Meats makes the best hot dogs, the Pettigene Griller, or the All Beef Franks will score. To complete that tailgate meal, Pettigene Meats has hickory smoked sausage, hot links, Polish sausage, and the best hickory smoked bacon and ham around. Available at your local retailer. And a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. It's Pettigene Meats. Taste the difference. We can't wait to see the Cowboys back on the field, and we can't wait to pack AT&T Stadium to watch them play. When that time comes, SeatGeek is the place to get all of your tickets. Plus, tickets to the hundreds of games, concerts, rodeos, and other live events we'll all be able to enjoy again soon. Every SeatGeek purchase is protected by a buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. SeatGeek. Let's go. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. Back to hanging with the boys. Welcome back to the SWBC Mortgage Living Room in Frisco, Texas. The last segment of our wonderful show today. And if you're coming to the Cowboys game this weekend to see them take on those Cleveland Browns, Make sure you know before you go, wear a mask, keep distance, and be prepared for cashless transactions. Please be aware of all safe stadium policies. Prior to arriving at the stadium, visit DallasCowboys.com slash safe stadium for details. They will fill you in. And did you guys know that milk is the fastest liquid on earth? Milk? Yeah, it's the fastest liquid on earth. Because it's, no. it's pasteurized before you even see it. See, there you go. See, Kurt, you oh, you, yeah. you fell yeah. right into this. Table. Well, you know, pasteurized. <laughs> we get it. Ah! <laughs> okay, all right. Cowboys offense. What are we going to see this weekend? 
What do we need to see uh, this weekend for them to win? <laughs> Pasteurized. It better be pasteurized, isn't it? Pasteurized. That's what we hope they do pasteurized. Oh, hey, Jesse, I got, before we get into it too big, I, I got a question for you. I want to know if you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing or, or if I'm just making stuff up. Does C.D. Lamb looks really skinny on the field to me? He looks really thin. He and, does. And I, think he'll th- I think he'll thicken out once he gets in a NFL conditioning program for a season. But he, man, he's – he has some dog in him. I see him go after blocks. I see him come back to the ball and, and, and block guys. I see him lock guys up. Like, I see I see a guy that's got some, I mean, on the offensive side of the ball that's got some fight in him. Are you seeing the same thing? Yeah, and that's, who, that's always who he's been, though. Like, even at Oklahoma, he was um, – he's, he's, he's aggressive in everything that he does. He, he moves at a pace, reminds me of – Felix Jones, where it doesn't look like he's moving fast, mm-hmm. and then you see separation, right? He really understands how to run routes and how to control route run. Um, but yeah, he's a like he's a literal dog. He wants to be in there, and if it's going in to get a block, if it's blocking a DB, going to get a safety, running after the catch, like he has a lot of dog in him. Okay, good. I'm not making so your stuff eyes ain't up. bad. No, you you you're saying good stuff. Right, and, and, right. and when you and when you see him get caught out of position and get hit, boy, like a stick man in the wind. Too. <laughs> 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 we scared me to death when they tackled him the other day, man. I was like, on that punt return, on that yes, punt sir, return, I, like, I thought that man, broke his him. legs, went, oh. yeah, his legs went yeah. every kind of way, man. I like hurry up yeah. and get an off season, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt, but I, but I tell you, like right here, man. Yeah. Michael Gallup, bro. Go ahead, that's all I got to say. Oh, man. He, that's all that's a I physical dude. And he's, sne- he's sneaky physical, too. He doesn't look like he's got he's got Dez type high point potential. Like he, he gets physical, but he doesn't. He's like CD Lamb. CD doesn't look like he's running fast. He's smooth, but he gets that, like you said, Jesse, that separation. Michael Gallup, he doesn't look like he's physical, but he fights and he comes down with the ball. I told you guys in the summertime when all the hype was around C.D. Lamb and all the hype was around Amari Cooper, and I gave some words of encouraging via hanging with the boys to Michael Gallup. Sitting on the front porch. Sitting on the front porch. (laughs) I said, listen, while everyone's talking about C.D. Lamb and how he's going to be in this, this, and everyone's talking about Amari Cooper, how he's going to be this, you just keep working. You just keep working because if you continue that ascension that you've been doing the last two years, you're going to be just fine. And he is picked up where he left off last year, making big play after big play after big play. And and and, and again, everybody, we, we live in this day and time where everybody wants to make everybody the next number one or the next GOAT or whatever it is. And sometimes you just got to be number two. And number two doesn't mean that you're less than, but if number two is it works like a it, it work if number two works like a number one for you, then just be that. Be the best number one, number two you can possibly be. And I think that's what Michael Gallup is doing. He's being the best number two, but he's doing it in a number one fashion, coming up with the big plays coming up with the catches, doing things that we need him to do, and that's going to pay huge dividends in several games this season. In my DJ Khaled voice, we the best number two. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we the best number two. (laughs) (laughs) I I tell you, man, uh, it's time. This is the fourth game. It's time for this team to start looking and playing with efficiency and consistency. It's time, right? This game here, and and and, and like I say, uh, Coach uh, Stefanski, he don't give you a whole bunch of different looks. They line up and they play, and they play do hard. Think, do you think that you know the Cowboys? I think they're tied for first in the league in big in plays of over twenty yards, and um, the Browns are actually one of the best at defending. They've given up, I think, only ten plays of twenty yards. It's, does that affect the Cowboys' game plan at all, or they just keep slinging it down there and, and do what they, they do? Just keep being who they are. You, you got to yeah. be who you are. You got to try to, like Jesse said the other day, you got to find your identity. 
And it don't matter what it is, but you got to find it and you got to demand it and you got to and make people respect it. Here's one of the biggest things that is hurting the Cowboys. And I cannot preach this enough. And I'm going to read a stat to you and it's going to blow your mind. But this is one of the things that are that are hurting the Cowboys offensively. The Cowboys had 37 drives this year. They've started just one, just one inside their opponent's territory. Mm. 29, 29 of the 37 have started inside their own 25. And eight of the 37 has started inside their own 13-yard line or worse. What I'm saying is the Cowboys are not giving themselves a chance offensively or I should say defensively, but the offense isn't Our giving a chance. Teams. Or special teams. Yeah. They're not giving the offense a chance to go short fields. And when you consistently have to go 70, 80, 90 yards to, to score, that, you want to talk about percentages, the percentages of you scoring a touchdown are, are dropping every time. And so for the Cowboys offense, they're starting so far away from their end zone, it's ridiculous. And now you're having to take these drives to drive the ball down the field, and you're giving the ball to your opponents where they only have to go just a hop, skip, and a jump to score a touchdown or to get in field goal range. So the Cowboys have to do a better job uh, uh, special teams-wise, defensively, because their offense – has been going, you know, when you play, the, we play this play a game, we used to call it, you know, free fall or, or you know, touch them up uh, football. And you know, tell the people, you got to take the walk. And the Cowboys mm. offense got to take the walk. <laughs> and they got to go all the way back down the field. And that's just a hard thing to do week in and week out against these top, you know, NFL teams. And even though that they may not be the best teams, when you have to drive the ball 80 yards a game, that just makes it very difficult, man. You need you, you need to try to find some ways where you can get short fields where you don't have to go, you know, because you use up you use up all your plays when you got to go, you know, all this long. They started to, they started to drive last week because of Tony Pollard fumbling on the one yard line. They mm-hmm. had to drive ninety nine yards. Like that's just that's a tough way to play football. You know, you you look at this team, man. It was the same last year, and that is why, Kurt. They have all these amazing yards. Mm-hmm. When you're starting on the 19 or less, you got to go 70-some yards. You got to go 79 yards. And all of a sudden, you you get you accumulate all these yards because the defense is back off you. And then when you get inside the 20, everybody tighten up. And the blitzes start coming and the schemes start coming into effect. And all of a sudden, you kick three. See, that, that's sad. That's too. I'm serious. Even with the great yeah. talents you have, if you it's can, too much if, to overcome. If you, can, if you can average starting on say the 35, how much better would this team be? Because if you start on the 35, sometime of the opponent, boom, you throw a 20 yard ball, you in the red, you you down there and go to go. Yeah. Our boys throw a 20 yard pass. I want to put them on the 50 yard line. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> That's just, just bad execution, bad not playing smart football. Is that the reason behind it all? I think they're sloppy. They're yeah. undisciplined. The things that we consistently talk about all week long. Yeah. And, and and those are the little things that you don't see but make a difference. Like, you know, nobody doesn't see really where they, you know, people, most of the common fan, you're not paying attention to where they start where they start at. Oh, we just haven't got the ball. Let's go, let's go drive them through the field. But if you're talking about having 37 possessions and none of them just about start in your own territory and eight of the 37 start 13 on a 13 yard line <clears throat> or worse, <clears throat> that's tough sled, man. That's tough sled. And your, your, your opportunity to drive the ball down for points, it becomes slimmer and slimmer and slimmer if those are the odds that you have to face week in and week out. Bad special teams. We are not playing average special teams. We're playing bad special teams, and we are not. We talked about it over and over during the offseason. You know what, defense? Just get us, get us a turnover. One per half. Get us a turnover. Shorten the field once or twice, and you'll be amazed at the momentum 
change. Play great situational defense. That has not happened. That has not happened. Everything we do is going to be four, going to be 60 yards or more. Just think. What Jesse just told you, on average, let's do the uh, the analytical numbers, which I ain't no numbers guy, but you starting on the, you starting 60 yards out on average every time. Hmm. Yeah, they, so we tell the other team, hey, man, we'll just start 60 yards out. They'll say, go ahead on. <laughs> yeah, they, they rank 30th in the league in average starting field position, which is about the 23-yard line. And where were we last year? Oh, we was, 30, we was 32 Who, last year. Kurt, who's behind them, Kurt? Uh, the Jets, who are, we know how bad they are, and the mm-hmm. Giants, we know how mm-hmm. bad they are. Wow, again, you, you, it's again, a common denominator there too, right? They, <laughs> yeah. they give you the ball. They give you the ball at the twenty-five yard line if you just stay in the end zone. If you don't even catch it and just do one of these things, you get the ball at the twenty-five yard line. And if, you know what I'm saying? And we're starting at the twenty-three. Think about that. Like if you don't even do yes. anything, if you do nothing with the ball on kickoff, right? Nothing at all. Yes, that's what I'm they saying. They start you on the twenty-five. We can't even get yeah. that right. Where well, they're saying our average start is on the 23-yard line. Actually, it's the Jets in Minnesota. So, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. You so, know what? We ben can Bloom control that. Ben Bloom is with that. Cleveland, right? Ben he, Bloom, he, Bloom is he, with Cleveland, yeah, right? Yeah, he's he with Cleveland. Was. <coughs> we can't control all that, but what we can control is getting out of here on time and letting Chris go set up for his next show. So, Chris, we're going to do that for you. Nate, it's been great. Kurt. Thank hey, there, you, Jesse. There, yes, sir. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott, our boss just walked in. Y'all, Scott, how you doing? Hey, Nate's what? <laughs> oh, that's not Scott. Okay. Oh, that's Kent. That's Kent, man. I'm sorry. Both of them got to hug their heads. Hey, what's up, Jess? Jesse? Jesse? Jesse, st- stay safe on the porch. Kurt, see ya. Nate, yes, see sir. ya. Chris, thank I was you doing, us on the air. I Let was doing push ups on the porch, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tomorrow, and hey, with the boys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for Tailgating with the Otterbox. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!